Good evening. Welcome to our midweek time of worship and, and uh, prayer and Bible study. Good to have you with us. And uh, just want to give a little time for people to settle in and, and uh, just let us know when you're here and uh, ready to go. We've just had a, a, a wonderful couple of days here with our grandkids being here. Gave their mom a little break and they've been here, Kayla and Renly. And we just uh, enjoy so much having them here. And uh, the mom just, uh, just a little bit ago came and took them home. And uh, so we had a good time. It's a little windy out today, but it sure is nice to have it cool down and we're having a great time. And I'm, I just always talk, stop and think, you know, what would we be doing at camp meeting right now? I guess um, this would be the first full day of camp meeting if we were having it. Um, but we'll look forward to next year. For sure we're gonna have it next year and we're looking forward to that. And a lot of this will be behind us. Uh, but God willing, God, uh, God leads and he guides and, and we know that uh, he'll be with us one day at a time. Well, it's, it's good to have you join us to, today and uh, tonight we're going to talk about how the darker things get, the greater God's love shines. That's just the way it is. But first, we want to look as we have in the past with uh, where we are with the COVID-19. Um, we're, we're planning to have a board meeting for Wyndham tomorrow night at 6.30. Uh, with the new development uh, Sunday, where the uh, governor has, uh, has uh, uh, loosened the restrictions, and uh, they're saying now 50% of the church's capacity, according to the fire marshal. And that will be much easier to uh, implement. And so we're going to come up with a plan. We're going to get together and talk about it tomorrow night at 6.30. And uh, I've been talking to, the, uh, to Pipestone as well. And uh, so we'll be talking about getting together with them as well to come up with a good plan. Uh, so keep that in your prayers as we, as we plan to open church again and uh, plan to keep going with our online worship services. We're not going to just uh, quit those. We're going to keep going with these online worship services the church service and the midweek service every week. Uh, and um, we're going to just incorporate that into our, our new schedule. And uh, for, for a while before uh, Karen and I start visiting the churches again, we'll be doing the service right here from right here at home, at our home in, in uh, Louisville. Uh, Looking at the, the numbers, it's a grim task and it'd be so good when we don't have to look at these numbers um, anymore. But uh, in the world, uh, 7.2 million cases now, up from 6.3 uh, last week. Um, we're up from 380,000 deaths to 413,000 deaths worldwide. Um, even though uh, here in the United States, uh, the, the, uh, the cases and deaths are declining, and that's a very good sign for us to see that. Uh, and we hope that that continues to be the case. Uh, here in the United States, we're at 2 million cases, up from 1.8 million last week. 
uh, the deaths are at 112,918 deaths as of today. Um, and uh, that's up from 106,723 last week. Each one of those represents uh, a precious life in God's sight, a, a life that Jesus died for. And uh, we just want to remember them, their families in a special way. Some of them didn't have family. Some of them were, died alone, tragically. Some that did have family still died alone. We want to remember those families in a special way. Here in Minnesota, um, we're up to 28,000 cases from 21,000 last week, 21,900 last week to 28,000 this week. And uh, we have uh, gone up from 909 deaths on 527 to 1,267 deaths now in uh, this week. But in our Southwest District, we've just been looking at the hot spots here last week and this week. And uh, that's encouraging. Uh, no new deaths to report here in the Southwest District of Minnesota. But uh, last week, the, the two hot spots were Watonwan County, which is the county that we live in. Karen and I live here in, in Louisville in Watonwan County. And Lyon County, where our Marshall uh, church is. And now that has changed. There's still two hot spots in the Southwest District, but they are Cottonwood and Lyon counties. Cottonwood is um, at 22.6 cases per 100,000 residents. That's up from 7.5 per 100,000 residents two weeks ago. So that's the hot spot. One of the hot spots now is Cottonwood County, where our Wyndham Church is. Um, Lyon County is also even more of a hot spot with 44.2 two cases per 100,000 people. That's up from 5.5 two weeks ago. So from 5.5 cases per 100,000 people, they're up to 44.2 per 100,000 cases. So that concerns two of the churches in our district, Wyndham and Marshall. And so we want to pray for wisdom and knowing how, how to address that situation as we look at reopening the churches and uh, also to remember them in our prayers in a special way. But overall, when you look at the hotspots in the state of Minnesota, uh, for the most part, we're declining, especially in the Twin City area. There's one little hotspot up in the northwest corner and then down here in the southwest in our Southwest District and the Southeast District as well, Rochester and the area around that, where, the, where there are some hot spots. But overall, the state looks pretty good and we praise God for that. And um, so one day at a time, we move forward. We want to review our prayer list tonight. Um, we praise God for all the answered prayer. And uh, it's good to keep keep a list and to look back on it, all the ones that we've been praying for uh, over the last few months. Elma, Saw Stephen, Cheryl Don, and Dale Roy, their son Nathan, David Nix's dad, and and uh, Bill and Dorothy Bacon, Grace, for their surgery, and we praise God for the way He has answered our prayer in all of those cases. And uh, we continue to remember Janet's daughter, daughter-in-law, Ashley, and, uh, and also a new request for Janet's sister, Deb, who is in the hospital. And uh, we want to remember her in our prayers. Um, 
Ryan Vivian as, as, as well as, as uh, she's recovering from her hip surgery. Dan and Sandy as they've, as they've lost their son. And Alicia, uh, we, we just want to continue to remember Alicia in our prayers. And God is blessing her and uh, one day at a time we continue to pray for her. Jeanette is in the hospital. Uh, been in the hospital this past week. We just want to continue to remember her in our prayers. And Tim with his numbers and Judy and Tim as they uh, are looking at uh, re a refinance on their, ho on their house. So uh, it's wonderful the way the Lord led them in thinking about selling their house to really showing them plainly that they should stay right where they are. Nice place in the country. And uh, so we, we pray for them that the Lord will continue to work that out for them, that they can be able to stay where they are and, and uh, be able to have, uh, have everything work out for them to do that. So let's just bow our heads in prayer tonight. Dear Father in heaven, we just thank you for your daily care for us, that we can come to you here in the middle of the week. We can uh, come away from, from whatever we've been doing during the week. Even though we have uh, a lot, many of us been, uh, been staying here at home, there's so many cares that, we, that, that encroach upon our lives. And we just leave all that behind and we come to worship and to, to pray and to study your word tonight. We pray your Holy Spirit will be with us. We praise you for, for answered prayer. We continue to pray for, for Ashley. And also now, Deb, we pray that your healing hand may be upon her in the hospital. Roy and Vivian as well can encourage them. And they've been through a lot in the last couple years here. And I just pray that you'll be with them and draw close to them, especially Dan and Sandy. You'll continue this year. It's going to be very difficult in, in the years ahead. Alicia, we, we thank you for being with her, and we just pray you'll continue to be with her and bless her with your healing hand. Jeanette in the hospital, we just pray that uh, you'll give the doctors wisdom as they treat her and uh, that you'll stay close to her and, and uh, the sunshine will... The clouds will be, should be able to press through those clouds and see the sunshine of your love in, the, in this difficult time. And for Tim and Judy, we continue to pray with, for them and we thank you for what, what you have done. And we pray your, your continued help and guide us, guidance during this time in their lives. And we just thank you and praise you for all that you have done and we put ourselves in your care and keeping. We thank you for the uh, encouragement that we have seen in the, in the way that uh, our local uh, numbers are going. We look forward to being able to meet together again as a church and yet to do it in a safe way and to, uh, to protect those in, that are vulnerable in our churches. So we just pray you'll give us your wisdom and guidance that we may know how best to do that. And we thank you for all that you will do as we put our faith and trust in you once again. In Jesus' name, amen. I just saw um, a, a little note just disappear as soon as I looked at it, said Michael Astine wants to, and then it disappeared. So maybe if you want to see if this will help us here. I, I don't know, maybe we'll look for that. We'll look for that. Um, the title of uh, the our study tonight is the greater God's love will shine 
In our lives today, we're surrounded by more and more darkness, challenges. Uh, in the world, there are, in, are increasing disasters worldwide, earthquakes, a tsunami, uh, a few years back, hurricanes and cyclones getting more intense. Uh, most recently, this COVID-19 pandemic that is uh, going around the world. And some countries are, are still to reach their, their peaks. And they're, they're the countries that, that are the uh, poorer countries tending to be and, and least able to, to fight this pandemic. So we just want to remember them. But increasing disasters in the world and this pandemic has taken so many lives and threatened to ruin the economy of countries of our country and many countries in the world. And now, most recently, what started with the death of George Floyd, right here in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, has become a worldwide call for justice. And unfortunately, this murder of a local citizen by a Minneapolis policeman, aided by his three companions, has led to bloodshed and rioting and looting, which we cannot condone. But not only is that true locally, but around the world. Though much of the more recent protests this week have been, and the calls for justice have been peaceful as they should be. But it has, this has opened up wounds that have been festering for many years, and it's affecting all of us. And for an increasing number of us, there have been growing personal challenges to our physical and spiritual well-being, whether that might be a chronic illness or others of life's complications. But in the Bible, The more you look at it, the darker things get, the greater shines God's love. That's what we want to look at tonight. Because we can be encouraged when we see that pattern in the Bible. This is especially true of the events of the last days that are foretold in prophecy. A few years back, uh, we were reminded, we had a memory here of that come up and uh, this week we took a canoe trip with the group there in our uh, former district uh, one of our former districts we were in the Maple Plain district and we got some people together to go on a, on a little canoe trip down one of the local rivers and um, one of our friends that was coming along with us, Kathy Park, uh, she was a little apprehensive because she hadn't been canoeing much in the past. And um, she was a little fearful of what was going to take place. But as we were, as we were getting ready to leave our house, as we had gotten together, to get ready to go on this canoe trip, she saw something Karen had put up in the bathroom. It was a text. And uh, it was this text I wanna share with you, Isaiah 43, verses one to four. The thing that brought this to mind <laughs> was, uh, was a video that, uh, that uh, Carl shared of his mother um, going sideways on a rock and just as she's going sideways on a rock and in, in the current he's saying you don't want to do that and as he says that she's tipped over into the into the river so easily that can happen so quickly and that brought to mind this experience 
of our canoe trip. And this is the text that uh, that Kathy Park saw in our uh, in the mirror in the bathroom. It said, "But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and He who formed you, O Israel." Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored, and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. This was a wonderful promise for Israel in the dark times. This was down at the end of, of the north, northern uh, country of Israel's time. And Assyria was about to come down and to take them captive. And then it's about 600 years later, it was going to be Babylon that was coming to take Judah, the southern kingdom, captive. So there was a lot of, of trouble that was coming. But in the midst of all of that trouble, God gave this promise that he would be with them. And he would, even in the darkest times, his love would shine because of the way that he would be with his people in the midst of trouble. Another, now that was, that was Isaiah 43, 1 to 4. And it just so happens that these texts that we're looking at is uh, the first one through four, 43, one to four, and now we go to 61 through four of Isaiah. And it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise over you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. The, de the Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together, they come to you. Your son shall come from afar, and your daughter shall be nursed at your side. When darkness surrounds us, we are to arise and shine, not with our own light, but with the light of God. What is the light in this case? The light is God's love, and it's the same imagery as the lampstand in the sanctuary. The lampstand stand imagery. The lampstand, um, it was that golden uh, lampstand. It was made of pure gold, and it had seven lamps on it, which burned olive oil. And, uh, and the imagery was that that olive oil represents the Holy Spirit. And God's love is shining from that lampstand. And uh, it also represents the Shekinah glory, the light of God himself that shone out from the most holy place in the sanctuary. And then there's the messages in the book of Revelation to the seven churches, and all of them are, are going through various trials and, and circumstances and yet, God is there, Jesus is there to trim their lamps so that they can shine with his love. They can shine in the world. And that light, that shining, is the shining of God's character 
which is spelled out in the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments are love to God, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. And that is the light that shines from the lampstand when it shines so bright in the midst of the darkness of this world. And so that's especially true at the end of time. We go from Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 4, to Daniel 12, verses 1 to 4. It says there, at that time, well, what time are we talking about? The time of the end. At that time, Michael shall stand up. And who is Michael? Michael is the prince who has charge of the people of Israel, the prince who has charge of us, Michael, who, who, the one who is like God, who is Christ himself. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Verse 3 says, those who are wise, what kind of wisdom we're talking about? We're talking about the wisdom that comes from going to and fro through the pages of Scripture and learning about the great plan of salvation and the prophecies of the Bible. Those who are wise in that way will shine like the brightness of the firmament, the brightness of the sky above. And what color is the sky? The Sky is that sapphire blue, and that sapphire blue in the Bible represents loyalty and obedience to God's, to God's holy law of love. And so it says that those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness, and righteousness is is being like God, and God is love. We receive that righteousness by receiving Christ. Love is the fulfilling of the law. Those who turn many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal up the book until the time of the end, because many will run to and fro. That's a Hebrew Id idiom for studying the scriptures and knowledge concerning those scriptures shall increase, especially in the prophecies. So we're living in that time. I believe we're living in that time. And, that's, and it's, so it's time for God's people to shine. The darker things get in this world, the more God's love is going to shine. And, and uh, when, when we're talking about God's love shining, he's both shining for us and through us. God's love shines for us in that in the darkness we are encouraged when we look up and we see his love and we're encouraged by his light, the light of his love, and then he shines through us to those around us with the knowledge of his love. Those who turn, who our wise will shine like the brightness of the firmament and turn many to righteousness, shine like the stars forever and ever. So that's what, what, it, what uh, the picture it gives is in the darkest time, God's love will shine for us and through us. And finally, in that, the next text we want to look at of this, these one through four passages, we've, we've looked at... Uh, We've looked at, first of all, Isaiah 43, 1 through 4, and then Isaiah 60, 1 through 4. And uh, we have 
Daniel 12, 1 through 4. And now we have Revelation 18, 1 to 4. And the thing that all of these have in common is of how God's love will shine in the dark times. Revelation 18, 1 to 4, it says, After these things I saw another angel. Now, there were three angels in Revelation 14, and they had a special worldwide message to every kindred, tongue, and people. And now here's another angel with that same message. But it's later on in time, during this time of great distress and trouble for the, for the earth. It says in Revelation 18, 1 to 4, After these things I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. Now, the angel represents God's people. The, the, um, they're not doing it on their own. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, they are illuminating the earth with God's glory. So this angel illuminates the whole earth with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying... Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and every and hated bird. Talk about darkness. That's a time of great darkness when Babylon is fallen. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues. So when God gives a call to come out of Babylon, where is he calling us out from? Well, Babylon, there are three parts to Babylon. The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. And those three parts make up the world as we know it. So, a call to come out of Babylon, we can look at those, those a little more in a little more detail uh, down the roadways, but the dragon and the beast and the pro false prophet represent the world. What part of the world isn't represented by the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. So, the message to come out of Babylon is the message to come out of the world. It's the same message that, that John gave in 1 John 2, verse 15 to 17, where he said, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world... The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lusts of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So this angel lights up the whole world with his glory. It's an angel to every kindred tongue and people in the world, lighting up the world with the everlasting gospel and inviting people to come out of Babylon, to come out of the world. And where do we go when we come out of the world? We go to the throne of grace, where the Lamb stands as though he had been slain in chapter 5 of the book of Revelation. And there we find help for our time of need. There we find power, power to live for him. Power, we find the power of God's love so that our lamps may burn brightly, that God can shine for us and through us in the dark times. Those are the, those are the passages of uh, the, the one through four passages that I wanted to look at. And the final passage I want to look at 
is often called the time of trouble psalm. It's Psalm 91. And uh, I remember my grandmother had memorized this psalm because uh, we're told that this especially has significance for the end of time. And she believed that she was living in the end of time. And so she had memorized this psalm and, and it really does apply. Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Someone called me this last week and said, could you tell me what does the Hebrew word behind that word wicked mean? Who is it talking about? And I believe if I remember correctly, the Hebrew word was rasha. And the wicked that it's talking about are those who have mistreated God's people. And that's why it says you will only see with your own eyes the punishment of the wicked. These are those in Revelation 6 verse 9 in, in the fifth uh, seal. Those who dwell, the, these are those who dwell on the earth who have slain God's people because of the word of God and the testimony that they have given. And they cry out, How long, O Lord, will you not judge and avenge your, our blood upon those who dwell on the earth? So a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Remember, the devil quoted this very verse here about cast, striking your foot against a stone to Jesus. He said, why don't you take him up on the temple and now throw yourself down. Look what it says here. It says God's going to protect you. That's not faith. That's presumption. And we have to be careful that we don't we don't, dis, uh, we don't uh, confuse faith with presumption. Faith trusts God to protect us and to do what he promised even if we refuse to disobey him. If we, if we st remain loyal to him, we may be afraid that if we remain loyal, something bad's going to happen to us. But faith will say... No matter what, I'm still going to follow him. I'm still going to obey him. I'm still going to love him and trust him. That's true faith. They, he will give his angels to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Isn't that a wonderful psalm?
you can see why it's called the psalm for the last days, the psalm for the time of trouble that, that uh, Daniel talked about in Daniel 12 and Jesus talked about also in, in the Gospel of John. Time of trouble, he said, such as never was since there was a nation nor ever shall be. But in the midst of all of that, we can rest in Jesus, assured that he will take care of us and he will protect us. And it doesn't mean nothing bad is ever going to happen to us, that we're never going to die of some disease, that we're never going to have even there be martyrs. But it does, it means that Nobody can do anything to keep us from eternal life. He will protect us. He will bring us through. And he'll give us one day at a time what we need to be able to get through it. We, we have that promise. So the darker things get, the more God's love can shine. And you remember, it shines both for us and through us. If we just keep coming to him in our time of trouble, he'll shine for us. And that's the title of our, of our song tonight that I want to sing, The Greater God's Love Will Shine. Uh, we heard this from the Harper family up there in the, at the Tasca Music Festival. And uh, it really... It really has a wonderful message for us and for God's people in the end of time. The bigger the burden, the heavier the heartache, the deeper the lonely night, the greater God's love will shine. The lower the valley, the wider the river, the higher the mountain to climb. The greater God's love will shine. The more love you need, the more He will give. The weaker you are, the stronger He is. In your darkest hour, that's when you will find The greater God's love will shine When you've got troubles, when you are hurting just open your heart to His light. The greater God's love will shine. The bigger the burden, the heavier the heartache, the deeper the lonely night. The greater God's love will shine. The more that you, the more love you need, the more He will give. The weaker you are, the stronger He is. In your darkest hour, that's when you will find the greater God's love will shine. The greater God's love will shine. something to remember whenever it gets dark the darker it is that's the greater the opportunity for God's love to shine in the midst of the darkness to, to shine for us and through us in these last days and he says lo I am with you always how long even to the end of the age shall we bow our heads Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for the encouragement that you've given us in your word that no matter how dark things get, that's the time for your love to shine the brightest. We 
We thank you for shining for us tonight, for encouraging us and for lifting up our, our eyes to see your glory once again. And we thank you for the promise that you will also shine through us if we come to you through your Holy Spirit, the seven flames of fire before your throne will enable us to shine with your love, to remain loyal and true to you, and lead many to righteousness in these last days. So we once again, we give our hearts to you and we thank you for your promise to be with, with us always, even to the end. And we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us once again. We look forward to uh, seeing you again uh, Sabbath morning at 11 o'clock, Central Daylight Time, right here on Facebook Live, especially for our Southwest District MNSDA. And our message at that time is going to be, We Cannot Help Speaking. And uh, we're going to look at the disciples in the early church there and how they, how they, they said that, and and we can say the same thing when we love Jesus. So we'll see you then. And ha have a great rest of the week, and may God be with you. May He shine for you and shine through you this week. That's our prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you for tuning in. God bless.